Nerfal here and in this video I am going to be doing more top 10 beginner tips for WoW. This is kind of an extension on my previous 10 tips so if you want to check those out I'll link them in the description below or they will be in the top corner. That one. <laughs> uh, so I hope you find it helpful and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. By the way, if you stick around to the end, I'll show you how to get some quick and easy free dragon mounts. The first little guide or tip we will be going through is Chromie Time. Chromie Time gives you the ability to level in any of the WoW expansions that have previously existed. When you make a completely new character for the first time on your account, you will be put in the Battle for Azeroth expansion. But once you make a second character, you will be given the ability to choose which expansion you want to level in from 1 to 50. On the screen now are all the different expansions that you can choose to level in. Unfortunately, there are a few that you can't choose in Chromie time. The base game, for example, you can just go out into the wild and start leveling in the Eastern Kingdoms or Kalimdor. I don't suggest this because it's honestly boring in comparison to the other available expansions. Uh, I did it before Shadowlands came out and it wasn't fantastic. You also can't choose Battle for Azeroth because your first character has leveled through this expansion and for some extremely weird reason, they don't give you the ability to choose this expansion again in Chromie time, even though it's incredible. You also can't choose the Shadowlands expansion because you have to first level to 50 in order to start this storyline. My personal favorites and top suggestions are number one, Legion. I have leveled in this several times and it's a lot of people's favorites. Number two, Battle for Azeroth. I personally love the Egyptian theme and had a lot of fun playing this. And number three, Mist of Pandaria, because it is absolutely beautiful. The Sakura trees and Japanese theme are mesmerizing and very relaxing to play in. Tip number two is to always repair your gear when you get to any repair NPC as you are leveling up. Hit C for your character info which includes your gear and stats and then when you hover over each piece of your gear you could see the durability level of that piece of equipment. As you could see here my leggings are durability 82 out of 85. When you get hit your durability lowers although when you die it lowers significantly. So if you die a couple times in a row there is a good chance that your armor can break. Bonus points if you recognize that death sound. <coughs> I have died a few times now and my durability is getting quite low. As you can see, I am now dying significantly faster than I was with full durability. You can see under the minimap, this suit of armor will appear when your gear is breaking. The yellow parts indicate which pieces are getting closer to breaking and then if you get hit some more, they will go red, which shows they are about to break. Never let this happen. Now I am going to the closest town in this questing area to find someone to repair my gear. You could click the little magnifying glass to the left of the minimap and then click townsfolk, which gives you the ability to to filter which NPCs you want to appear on the map as kind of a geographical guide. If you zoom into the map, you could see where the repairman is. And when you click on them, you can hit the anvil to repair your gear for a certain amount of gold. Mine is very cheap because I'm extremely low, but once you get higher, it costs up to hundreds of gold to repair your gear. So as you are questing, make sure you repair your gear at every repairman you find to avoid dying easily. Tip number three involves mounting up. You can use the grunt in your main city to locate the stable master where the riding trainer will be found nearby. I've written up a guide where apprentice riding is automatically learned at level 10, journeyman riding can be purchased for 50 gold at level 20, expert riding for 250 gold at level 30, and master riding for 5000 gold at level 40. You can see the speed benefits for each level in the middle. Please note that specific regions require special achievements and things to unlock flying, for example in Battle for Azeroth and Shadowlands. When you're a beginner you can buy basic racial mounts at the Kennelmaster here, but you will unlock new mounts as you level and loot things. 
At the end of the video, I will show you exactly how to easily get two cool dragon mounts. Tip number four is dungeons. You can press the I key to access group finder, which basically pairs you up with other players in the world to conquer dungeons together. There are three roles within dungeons, the tank, support and DPS. I went over this more in my previous video, so if you want more information, I suggest checking that one out. When you click find group, it will match you up with usually one tank, one support and the rest DPS. Based off your specializations, you can choose which role you want to fill within the dungeon. Although note that the support and tank roles are expected to do much more than the DPS roles. You can open the adventure guide to completely custom which dungeon you want to pick up if you for example have a quest or an achievement you're searching for and you can also read about each boss within the dungeon and the kind of loot they are expected to drop. You can look through this menu to kind of strategize how you want to play against the boss or whether you have the ability to do so. Of course there are a lot of things that are involved in dungeons and I can't go over everything in this one video but tip number four involves basic things that you can expect when it comes to dungeons in the game. Tip number five involves transportation. There are several different forms of transportation in WoW and honestly it can get very confusing at times. I still to this day have to search on Google how to get from this place to this place when it's something I'm not familiar with. But I will go through the types of transport that they have. Firstly, they have the portal room in your main city. This portal room mainly consists of portals that take you to all different expansions. As you could see, Ouroboros for Shadowlands, Asuna in Legion, Zoldazar in BFA, Jade Forest in Mists of Pandaria, and Dalaran for Legion again. Note that there are also Zeppelins denoted on the map by little symbols that look like worlds with spikies? Huh? When you come up to the Zeppelin Tower, the Zeppelin Masters will have written beneath their name where the Zeppelin actually takes you. So this Zeppelin will take me to Borean Tundra. That dude's melt is a spoiler. So while we are waiting for the Zeppelin, I will mention that there are also boats you could take between islands, but they are used much more often in early expansions. You wait for the flying ship and then when it comes, you simply board it and it will take you to the target location very quickly. The next tip I will be covering is world quests. World quests are extremely important for your game progression as you can farm tons of gold, gear, reputation and other zone specific things. I'm currently in my Covenant Zone Arden World, and on the map, all these exclamation points are world quests. It also shows you what you have to do, what you get from completing the quest, and how long until the quest expires. World quests reset every day and can be found all around the zones that you are in. Unlocking world quests for each zone requires different things, so simply research how to do this for your specific questing area. You could track and run to your world quests. There there are several different forms of world quests. Most involve killing, some involve shapeshifting and killing, some involve looting, flying, delivering, everything you can really think of. This specific world quest that I'm completing right now involves morphing into a bear and cleansing the area. You can see here that I have now completed the world quest and received some anima items. I highly suggest completing world quests if you are a daily gamer because this will help you advance pretty quickly. Tip number seven is huge. It is a setting called War Mode, which is a very OP setting toggle that can be activated while you're in your main city, either Orgrimmar or Stormwind City. You click N to open your talents menu and in the bottom right corner is the War Mode toggle. Once you activate this toggle, your name will go green and anyone else with a green name will be able to kill you out in the world. Basically, you will permanently have PvP on. This may sound scary, but you receive 10% more experience while it is activated and you also have the ability to use PvP talents, which you can kind of see as 
free skills. The only downside to this mode is that if someone kills you, you will have to respawn, which is only annoying if anything. So if you want to level quicker and have access to more skills, toggle war mode on within your main city. The next tip is to stay up to date with the hot fixes and updates through the WoW launcher and Facebook page. The launcher has a bunch of updates and hot fixes to view if you're interested in what's new. Sometimes there are really good deals on or even interesting hot fixes that might benefit your gameplay. Secondly, there is the World of Warcraft Facebook page, which is always good to have a look at if you're playing the game regularly. You can see here that the new Dragonflight expansion is highlighted on the front page. Go check out the trailer, it looks epic. Tip number eight is battle pets. I went through most of the game not understanding and not caring about battle pets and then I realized they are basically Pokemon. You can train the battle pet training skill at the battle pet trainer. This will unlock pet battling for all of your characters. He will give you a basic pet to begin with where you can unlock more exotic pets as you level and progress through the game. If you look on the map and hover over a zone it will give you the pet levels as you can see at the top of the screen here. I went to a pet level 1 to 2 area area to start leveling my new snake. The little green paws on the minimap guide you towards mobs that can be battled with your pet. Firstly, you need to drag one of your pets into the battle pet slot, and then you can right click on these mobs to start a very Pokemon-esque battle scenario, and then use your pet skills to attack. Very much like Pokemon, certain animal types are strong or weak against other animal types. Here I was using a beast type Poke, I mean battle pet, to attack the critter type animal. You gain experience from the fight and can slowly level your pets up further and further. It's quite fun if you're bored. The final tip is how to get two easy dragon mounts. Firstly, you want to head to the Borean Tundra Zeppelin as shown earlier in the video. This is for Orgrimmar. Arrive at the Borean Tundra and then head to Dragon Blight. On the map, you will see the green swirly denoting the raid the Obsidian Sanctum. Fly to this raid next to the Wormrest Temple, head to the north of the temple and go into the basement to find the portal to the raid. Please note, in order to get the Black Drake, you need to set your raid difficulty to 10 people. And in order to get the Twilight Drake, you need to set your raid difficulty to to 25 people. You can do this raid once a week, so it would only take you two sessions, one week apart, to get both the drakes. My settings are currently on 10 people. When you run into the raid, immediately kill Sartharian without killing anything else in order to get the drop. A chest will appear on the ground for you to open and receive the mount. But I couldn't see it because I'm blind, so I simply poured it out and collected it from my mailbox. Here you can see I have picked up the black drake and next week I can pick up the, in my opinion, cooler looking Twilight Drake. I hope you enjoy your mounts. So that is my video on more top 10 beginner tips in WoW. I'm sure I could come up with a thousand more, but I think these are the most integral tips that will help people that are new to WoW or people that don't really understand WoW. Please like, comment, subscribe if you have any questions. I'm very active on the channel and I will answer any questions that you have.